Anthony Harold. Hey, how's it going? How you doing? Hello. I'm doing well. How are you today? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Fantastic. Fantastic. A real pleasure to have you today, Harold. And uh, your uh, sophomore album, Right, was out on August 18. So would you like to talk a bit about this album and the production behind it? Yes. So uh, <clears throat> Right, which is our, our, as you said, our sophomore album, um oh whew, there's there's a lot of things I could say about it. Um this is uh this is probably the, the biggest undertaking um for uh for this band um for uh you know in a lot of ways um we we recorded at Westfall Studios which is in uh, Long Island, New York. Um first time really uh spending that much time in a in a recording studio i mean we you know we've we had done a lot of things diy up until that point um you know this was a little more uh intense um as far as uh like the the writing process and just kind of leading up to uh the making of the record uh, I'd say we we started writing around 2019. Mm-hmm. So the, these songs, uh, you know, were slowly coming together. And a great chunk of that was written during the pandemic. Um, and uh, I, I think that definitely had an impact on how the music would come together, you know, like just kind of sitting at home, cooped up right you know at a desk writing metal you know it, it's not the way that we would normally approach uh coming up with the new music yeah amazing yeah amazing and uh when you start writing this new album so did you guys had some kind of concept or a theme that went behind your mind so so when we, when we started writing the album um there were a few different ideas floating around um uh we were talking about how we wanted the music the musical direction to change a little bit uh prior to recording we'd been jamming a lot and a lot of like our writing process was just kind of go into the room put on our our instruments, you know, uh, and kind of just jam something out. And I noticed that we were getting a lot of very chill, relaxing kind of stuff, which which is good. I mean, there's a little bit of that on the record. Uh, but at a certain point, I remember looking at the guys and saying, well, you know, um, we, I think we, we, shine the most when we're kind of like really exploring our creativity and being imaginative with the heavier aspect of the music um you know like we we were talking about our debut ep uh entanglement and how you know i mean we were really young when we wrote that like basically college kids uh (laughs) And we were thinking, okay, you know, we kind of want to channel that sort of intensity, um, but just a little bit more refined. Um, So so that was a big part of the writing uh, going into, or a lot of the ideas about writing going into the new record. Um, Another, um, another big aspect of of putting that record together was uh we weren't sure if we wanted to do a concept album or if we wanted to do something that was more uh like a collection of songs um you know we've always been big prog you know concept album fans you know like dream theater and you know between the buried and me like bands that just like do a lot of uh you know like eight to ten tracks that tell a story yeah. and uh, a lot of themes um so we wanted to do 
box the songs in or we you know we didn't want to limit what we could do um across the record as far as like exploring themes so so we kind of went a slightly different path where we it still feels conceptual and um the music itself there's a lot of themes within each song that we're exploring um as opposed to exploring themes across like you know eight or ten songs we're, we're looking at one song that's maybe four you know maybe five minutes and kind of like building these little mini themes and <laughs> developing them within that smaller time frame fantastic fantastic and uh talking about the album right uh eight amazing songs wonderful progression great musicianship behind i it's like and listening to a kind of art from the start to the end without any break you just sit you listen and you enjoy the music and moreover you just guys made it sound like the fall of albatross it does sound like some other prog metal like this is something there's a trademark of you guys so brilliant work from you guys i totally dig each and every song from this album so thank you guys so much for putting up an amazing album this year and as a band what are your thoughts and how do you guys feel about the outcome well first of all thanks for for the kind words i mean that that really means a lot uh as a band we've always strived to just kind of be uh to like our identity is a very important thing to us which you know um we we have a lot of influences you know from you know like a lot of the big prog metal bands you know down to like you know pop music and and like old school jazz and r&b and you know and punk and and you know just you know we have a lot of different things that kind of uh inspire us and it would be really hard for us to just kind of replicate one thing <laughs> you know like like we don't want to replicate anything but you know in the way that a lot of bands uh might lean heavily into you know their inspirations it it would just be too hard for us to choose one to lean into we're, we're just like you know we we love Mashuga, but we also love you know um minus the bear or the mars volta or you know um gorguts or something and you know th these are all great influences but we we don't want to be any one of those bands we're just kind of doing our own thing um and uh i think it also helps that within the band you know everyone has like like we all like a lot of the same stuff but everyone has certain uh styles that they're more uh fond of mm -hmm. so um when we get down to uh to writing it usually turns into a little bit of a push and pull where, you know, for instance, um, our drummer uh, plays in a, a more technical, like a tech death band called uh, the Charleston Swing. And um, he loves like that kind of tech death and the death core and um, some of his uh, influence is definitely there, but, you know, we might sit down and he might suggest an idea um, based in, in death core. And, you know, I might, you know, I have a lot of uh, soul and R and B in my uh, upbringing and I might say, Oh, well, you know what, what if we kind of took that death core idea, but like brought a little bit of soul to it <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> Um, and you know, that's that's just that's just one example of how we might um, start developing an idea. And I, I think when you do it that way, it's it's really hard to sound like anyone else because you you just you know it's it's like an experiment each time, and it's you know we're just kind of being true to what we all enjoy, you know, on different levels.
Fantastic, fantastic, Harold. And uh, did you guys do something special on the day of the release on August eighteenth? Yes. Uh, so we we had our um second uh Prague and Pancakes event, which is a this was a kind of a funny idea that uh started in back in twenty eighteen um when we put out put out Abscission, which was our previous release. Uh, we were all kind of joking around and, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a foodie, you know, I love food. I love, uh, you know, pancakes. And I, I don't remember exactly how it came about, but I think we were all kind of just joking about the idea of combining live music and, and food. And I was like, well, you know what, what if we had like a prog metal show but like we serve pancakes or something you know like yeah or or i think there was at one point a suggestion for like pulled pork in prog or something and we're like all right well that's that's for one that would be very expensive and uh <laughs> and you know pancakes is a little more fun that's something we could do and we were uh you know shopping the idea around you know we're all based in new york city like in brooklyn and um you know most of the venues were just like we would not let you do this <laughs> and and eventually we found one that was like yeah you know serve serve pancakes you know just don't make a mess so um we did we did that in 2018 for that release and then we felt like it was right to do it again for for the the release of right um so on the 18th uh we went to um purgatory in in Brooklyn and we had um we had a bunch of pancakes and griddles and in maple syrup <laughs> And we, everyone who came to the album release show got free pancakes and it, it was a great time and everyone had fun. Fantastic, fantastic. And it sounds like it's going to be a tradition for Fall of the Albatross. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. We, we might even serve uh, waffles at the next one. May, maybe. <laughs> that should be interesting. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, how is the touring plan looks for you guys this year? So we are actually in the middle of uh, working out a tour for this coming fall. Um, we we had plans to hit the road. Um, well, truthfully, we would have been on tour right now, but we had some things come up um within the band that just made it really difficult for us to go on tour um but we are looking to hit the road um i believe we're going to be on the road in late september early october um and uh yeah that's you know we're going to try to cover as much ground as possible and then follow up maybe early next year with a, a bigger tour run um you know we're, we're all uh pretty uh familiar with like the east coast but it would be really nice to go further out you know into the midwest the west coast um and you know just a big dream of mine would be to play internationally and um what's kind of cool is that with, with this new record uh, we've been getting a lot of plays from uh, in uh, Finland and uh, in Norway. So there's a part of me that's like, hey, you know what? Maybe that means uh, maybe next year we'll do a European run. You know, who, uh, that I, I, I can't speak for the rest of the band, but I think that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. Fantastic, fantastic. And Joe, mm -hmm. how has this journey mm. with fall of the albatross has been for you guys so far mm, i'm sorry how has this journey with fall of the albatross has been so far it's the it's been it's been a very honestly it's been a very fun journey um this band has been like just a 
an absolutely absolutely cr crucial part of my well-being and and you know some I, I don't think there are many things that I've ever been so proud of in my life um like the ability to make music and perform it in front of people and um just to have something that you, you know I think a lot of artists um have shared this sentiment about how the music lives on and and how it has a life of its own and you know in so many ways I, I'd like to imagine that uh people will listen to Fall of the Albatross um you know 10 years from now 20 you know 40 years from now um regardless of whether or not we are still like making music or able to make music um i hope that we will be <laughs> but it's it's something that uh you know i'm very proud of the work that we've been able to do and you know in in this world it's a lot easier not to do it because um you know life is crazy you know so many things happen uh, and, and, you know, this band's been together since 2009 and um, so many things have happened along the way. You know, we've had band members that have come and gone. Um, you know, we've had we've each had personal things that have come up and, you know, we've had a lot of highs and a lot of lows and, um, you know, but we're we're here and in a lot of ways, right, is kind of a celebration of how that that we're still standing after all that time. And, uh, you know, hopefully for many more years. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, would you like to share some of the highlight moments for the band the last couple of years? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um. So so when the first thing I think of when when you say highlight moments is uh I think about uh some of the time we've had on the times that we've had on tour uh we've played some of our favorite shows I think to this day the only uh like sold out show that we've played was in Gainesville Florida which was really cool. It was at a, a place called, I think it's called Lucy's. And, um, you know, that was back in 2018. That, that was an amazing moment. Um, there has been, um, you know, year, I mean, this was also around the time of the last tour. We played a show in um, Louisville, Kentucky, that was a, it was a lot of fun but it was also one of the most <laughs> insane uh shows and uh tour stories of our lives um you know basically we uh we played at a, a sports bar there um right around halloween <laughs> and <laughs> turned out that the the show itself uh was some sort of a, an erotic ball and <laughs> and we weren't made aware of it until the day of and i mean we're very much like uh you know we're we're driving into the tornado kind of band like what whatever it's gonna be we're we're there for it <laughs> and it ended up being one of the most surreal experiences just to kind of watch it all unfold and you know we're just kind of sitting around um just taking it all in <laughs> um all i i won't go into all the details but i'll say that like folks know how to throw a party and um in louisville hopefully we'll be back there on this next tour <laughs> um <laughs> we've uh <laughs> okay so other other highlights of the band um we uh Ooh, we have. Mm, oh, well, earlier this year we played a really great show at St. Vitus here mm -hmm. in, in in New York. 
Um, we played with uh, some good friends. Um, I actually played double duty because I, I play guitar in a band called Glass Artery that was uh, opening the show. Um, and, you know, it was a great crowd. Um, we had a chance to kind of preview some of the new material right then and there. And uh, it was it was just so much love in the room. Um, and, and as a general highlight, one of my favorite things about playing um, in this band is the love that is there. Like when, and when I'm what I'm talking about is like every time we play a show, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough to see friends that. I haven't seen in years, like people I've grown up with to people I've met maybe in the past six months that are showing up and supporting or it, and just, you know, there's, there's something kind of special and surreal about being in the room and seeing the faces of all these people. And it's, it's almost like a, this is your life moment <laughs> where you know, everyone's there, you know, cheering you on. And it's, it's just, you know, in a, in a way that you would never expect to see all those people in one place. And there's something really beautiful about that. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, talking about the future plans, the upcoming albums. So do you have some kind of thought process, like you want to do something different from what you're doing currently? Mm. You know, that's uh that's something <laughs> I think we're definitely going to do something a little different. Uh we've been um we we have a couple of songs that didn't make it on to right that were um I I think it was just kind of a a bit of a issue of like okay, this song isn't going to be ready in time. We don't want to make the album take longer just to finish you know a couple songs there's there's probably about i'd say three or four um demos of material that we're probably going to revisit um i personally would love to keep exploring uh like different takes on metal you know like I'm a big fan of taking things that already uh, like, like I can kind of hear the connection between like maybe an electronica thing, you know, like, or some sort of like a vaporwave uh, <laughs> piece of music and kind of hearing how that connects to maybe something a little bit heavier or maybe just hearing a heavier version of that. And I think that would be a really cool um, way to experiment, um, you know, but it, but it's not just about uh, playing with different genres. I mean, that that is a lot of fun, but I, I also want to just I want to make things that are fun to play live. And I think that's always been a big part of uh like one of the things that we prioritize in this band, you know, we we want to have fun um, on stage. And I think uh, in a lot of ways, people who come to see us play, like they look forward to us getting silly and, you know, and bringing that kind of energy up there that, um, you know, it's it's just more welcoming that way. So that that's what I want to make sure we continue to do with uh with this up the next record. Fantastic. Fantastic. And Harold, finally, any message that you have for the fans around the world? Well, first of all, if if you're a fan of our music in any way, thank you. Like for real, thank you for uh for getting on this train um i mean i know these days there's there's so many artists i mean you know like every day i'm hearing about a new artist and i'm hearing new things that are really really good and 
you know, but but the point is that there's just so much competing for our time and attention. So for anyone to be giving us their time and their attention and in truly enjoying what we do, that just means a lot. And I just hope you have fun and keep doing it. <laughs> awesome. And uh, Harold, I want to thank you so much for giving me today this wonderful opportunity to have you on this interview. And thank you so much for you and the entire band for putting up an amazing album this year, right? Totally brilliant album and epic masterpiece from you guys. I totally loved it. And thanks again for this awesomeness. And I wish you guys all the best. I'm really hoping to see you guys on the road. Awesome. Thank you so much. You have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.